everywhere, citizens are honoring the new Soviet premier. People in the streets, truly the finest hour is premier. It has been decades since we've seen anything quite like this. General, we must escape now. Whoa, 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 what do you mean? I just became premier of the entire world. Didn't you hear? The new Yuri's Revenge expansion just came out. The Soviet campaign is no longer canon. The Allies won. Yeah! Comrade General, it is pleasant to see you again, even under these circumstances. We have discovered a plan by the Americans to alter the events of the past few hours. It's good to see loyal face, Comrade General. Allies are creating new technology for traveling backward in time. If you can capture this American time machine, we might have opportunity to change history and assure Soviet victory. The fate of Soviet Union, of entire world, rests in your hands. Well, darn it. It seems all our efforts in the base game were in vain, as the Allied campaign was deemed the canon one, and the Soviets were met with a crushing defeat. Fortunately, we received intel that the Allies have created an experimental time machine. If we can seize this technology, we can travel back in time and reverse this entire disaster. We're initially given several naval ships to eliminate the Allied coastal forces, Slowly bombard everything with dreadnoughts and move in with giant squids to finish them off. Afterwards, a task force will arrive and land on the beach, including the Soviet's new hero unit, Boris. Don't forget to snatch up one of the transports leaving, we will need it later. The Allies have a lot of patrols in the area. Lucky for us, there is a hospital available for us to capture. We can then use Boris to eliminate the patrols safely. The time machine is being kept inside a secured allied compound. This is where Boris' secondary ability comes in handy, as he is able to call in airstrikes to destroy enemy structures from a long range. And never mind. The airstrike jets are quite fragile, so if we wish to use them, we need to first eliminate nearby anti-air. Use the rhino tanks given at the beginning to destroy the defenses instead. After clearing the zone, we're asked to capture at least two power plants nearby to power up the time machine. At the same time, Yuri's forces will also arrive and try to obtain some power plants for themselves. Stop right there, criminal scum! The Allied patrols don't do much against them, but a few garrisons and rhino tanks can easily handle them. After capturing two power plants, we initiate the time travel. The first time travel doesn't go quite as planned, as we use too much power and travel back to the Jurassic era instead. We have to defend ourselves for two minutes while the machine is being recalibrated. We will use this time to rescue one of our dear friends, Rexy. Remember that amphibious transport we grabbed earlier? Bring that transport to this island and shove Rexy inside it so that we can bring Rexy safely back with us. Alright, we did it. Whoa, 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 where are you going? What the, come back! Alright, this time it'll work, for sure. Incoming transmission. What the f- Okay, so it turns out, because I have too many units, the trigger transported some of them on top of each other, resulting in my transports being destroyed immediately post-time travel. I tried to get around this by shoving all the space-occupying conscripts and engineers into flak tracks and the transport, but there isn't enough space available for that, and the transport still ends up destroyed. To get around this, I position my engineers so that I can capture all six power plants before the time shift happens, thus freeing up the space these engineers take in my transports. With this, I was able to fill all my conscripts into transports, freeing up sufficient space for the eventual return. And success! I decided ever since my first death list video that using engineers don't count as deaths cause no unit lost audio and as far as I know, they could be happily living inside these buildings for the rest of their life. And boy am I thankful for that decision right now. From here, link up with the local Soviet outpost and then use Boris to swim up to Alcatraz and destroy the psychic- I am not swimming out there. Get me an armor transport from shipyard. Fine Boris, we'll just use Rexy instead. Mission accomplished. So, Gumre, I am understanding you come from dark and terrible future. 
Allies will win war by using sneaky device called Chronosphere to invade Moscow. Destroy this Chronosphere device. Allies will give up their foolish resistance and together. We take care of traitor Yuri! After getting into contact with Premier Romanov in the past, our first task is to eliminate the critical piece in the Allied victory, Einstein's Chronosphere. Instead of protecting Einstein's lab like we did back in Allied Mission 10, we command the invading Soviet forces this time around. There are several ways to quickly end this mission, and we're going to do so by breaking right through the front entrance. By design, this mission wants you to first eliminate these three outposts and establish your own base before sieging Einstein's lab. Instead, we will group up our starting forces near the bottom side of the map. On hard difficulties, these three outposts are actually not idle and will produce troops of their own if you don't destroy them. In particular, these three tank destroyers parked in this outpost will actively seek out your forces. As the name suggests, they're incredibly deadly to your tanks, but proper positioning of our rhino tanks will be able to fend them off easily. Once our initial troops are grouped up, we push west along the bottom edge, close in on the lab and pull back the first rhino tank aggroing the enemy prism tanks while the rest move in to quickly dispose of the defenders. The only remaining defenses are pillboxes, which are quite ineffective against rhino tanks, so if we move swiftly, we should be able to finish the lab without losses and complete the mission. Unit promoted. Mission accomplished. Have you seen State News Magazine? The Allies have surrendered! Now they fight with us against the Traitor Yuri! All of Soviet people are full of Traitor Yuri! Our special intelligence operatives report another Traitor Yuri being constructed in London. Our Premier wants us to destroy it before Traitor Yuri can react. Having destroyed the Chronosphere and with it the Allies' chance at victory, we turn our attention to Traitor Yuri who has a standing psychic dominator in London, England. We start off with a small outpost and must destroy the nearby psychic beacon mind controlling the allied forces. First, we garrison these buildings with conscripts and move this transport back to defend against the allied attacks. Meanwhile, it's nice to send some troops to take down this grinder here to gain some cash. We can call down an airstrike with Boris to eliminate the Gatling cannons. Scratch that. Aggro one of the Gatling cannons with a garrison while destroying the other with an airstrike, then do the same for the aggroed Gatling. Then, we move on to destroy the psychic beacon. The bridge to the west is a bad idea, The seal will pop out of nowhere to blow up the bridge if we try to go through. Oh, I don't think so. Oh no! Instead, we move through this bridge to sneak behind the psychic beacon and eliminate it without too much allied casualty. Remember, don't use Boris to destroy the psychic beacon, because the Patriot missiles will shoot down the airplanes again. Instead, use some rhino tanks and punch through the walls. Once we do so, the freed allies will join us after a short cutscene, along with Tanya and an elite IFE. Welcome to the game, Agent Tanya. Game's over, Yuri. You're about to lose. Afterwards, the map expands, and we see Yuri's psychic dominator, which is on a 10 minute timer before it fires, so we move towards it immediately. Sophia recommends that we use these newly unlocked Tesla tanks to attack them as they can shoot through walls. But you know what else can shoot through walls? IFBs. Eliminate the Gatling defenses with the elite IFBs and depower the enemy base. Yuri will still send some Lasher tanks to defend the base though, so a couple repair IFBs and Tesla tanks will help repel them. Destroy the Psychic Dominator to complete the mission. Mission accomplished. Comrade General, I have very bad news. Premier Romanov's plane was shot down while returning to Moscow. The aircraft went down over Morocco. We believe that the Premier is alive and hiding somewhere in the city. Premier Romanov's airplane was shot down while passing over Morocco, and Yuri has surrounded the area in an attempt to capture him. We must retrieve the Premier before the enemy does so. Yuri holds most of the ground here, including the only airport in the area and a large base to the north. The Premier's location is here. If we don't get to him fast enough, Yuri will mind control him and take him back to the airport. Yuri will send a constant stream of infantry towards you, including Yuri clones and brutes. So we establish our defense by surrounding ourselves with these battle bunkers first. Once we do so, we can send a flak track and a terror drone to the east to reclaim the Premier. Flak tracks move fast and can transport the Premier back to our base, and the terror drone can eliminate the Yuri clones that attempt to mind control the flak track. Just make sure you're not unlucky enough to catch this bug.
We're here to get you out of here, Premier Romanov. You must have been suffering while waiting for your rescue. Come. Of uh, all the bars in all the world, look who is walking into this one. Welcome, comrade general. Get me to airport. These are plans for Iron Curtain. Capture some oil derricks around the map to gain additional income. Then demolish the space using a combination of a pox and Iron Curtain. The entrance to the airport is blocked by several buildings garrisoned by Yuri's initiates. They dish out some insane DPS at close range. So the only way to deal with them is to slowly reduce the entire place to rubbles, which we will speed up the process of using V3 launchers. During this process, we could garrison some of the buildings ourselves to exterminate Yuri's advancing infantry, but some of them may still sneak by us. We're gonna need some special forces to deal with this. Hail to the great Yuri. We've been trying to reach you concerning your car's extended warranty. <laughs> What the dog doing? After pushing through the city center, use the Iron Curtain and Epox to push through the base and extract the Premier. Mission accomplished. Spy plane ready. Ah, oh, my good friend! I am back where I belong! Sound and safe! The traitor Yuri is building fleet of boomer submarines! These can launch missiles in any city of his choosing! Sophia will tell you more. You must be careful, comrade. Yuri has many more surprises planned for us, I think! Soviet intel has located Yuri's secret submarine base on the remote island of Totoya in the Pacific Ocean. We are sent here to neutralize the facility. We are given a naval fleet at the beginning and are asked to pick a landing zone. There are three options available to us. The top left one seems appealing at first, but it's not ideal. The statue of Yuri will eviscerate any miners that get close. I decided to pick the bottom right beach, as there are three oil derricks nearby to boost our income. Yuri's boomer submarines surround the perimeter. These guys are vastly superior to the starting forces we've been given, so we should avoid attracting as many of them as possible. Scout ahead with your sea scorpions as their speed allows them to dodge a few torpedoes, then focus fire each boomer down. Once you land your forces, establish a base and bunker up. Totoya Island itself has a labyrinthine terrain with lots of cliffs that make it difficult to navigate and siege. To help with this, we're granted the blueprints for a new Soviet unit. Helicopter, helicopter. These new siege choppers are capable of firing down on ground targets and has a secondary ability that allows them to land and switch to an artillery to bombard enemies from afar. Additionally, we could skip sections of cliffs by constructing buildings across them, allowing us to push our defense line forward. Yuri's got virus patrols that can one-shot infantry and stone statues with considerable firepower at choke points. This makes ground attacks difficult, but we circumvent this issue with the aforementioned siege choppers. We need to act fast in this mission, as Yuri's slave miners will wander around the map in search of ore, eventually leading some of them to your base. If these miners left any slaves behind while traveling towards you, they would most certainly die the moment we free them. Yuri sends a constant stream of attack waves at us, forcing us to divert some attentions to defending. To help with this, we could capture some of Yuri's statues at choke points to aid our defense, using a pock to soak up the shots while moving in with an engineer swiftly to seal the deal. Despite the airborne advantage against most enemies in this mission, the siege choppers are quite weak against any anti-air Yuri fields. What's worse is that they don't have any self-repair options other than gaining elite status, so it is crucial that we try to level them up as soon as possible. Yuri's conyard is actually positioned slightly above his main base, so we will destroy that part of the base first, use siege choppers to carefully advance and capture the enemy conyard. This step is very important later on. From here, we can use the same strategy of hopping cliffs and breach Yuri's main base. There are lots of defenses in this area, but we don't need to destroy all of them. Create a pocket of space and drop the iron curtain on our siege choppers to destroy the only submarine pen in the area. Once we do so, Yuri will sell all his structures and order his forces into hunt mode. This is where a lot of problems rise. For starters, a substantial amount of initiates will emerge from the structures sold by Yuri and charge toward us, overwhelming any defenses we have. Then comes the slave miners, which will also rush toward us. If we allow our defenses to destroy them one at a time, their attached slaves will die from the gunfire of adjacent slave miners. And lastly, all the boomer submarines surrounding the island will seek out your navy all at once. 
trying to combat these guys with the Soviet naval arsenal will guarantee a loss. We will circumvent these issues one at a time. First, we will eliminate all of Yuri's slave miners using siege choppers before we destroy the submarine pen. Then, we can effortlessly eradicate the initiates using the desolator's ground irradiation ability. The boomer submarines are the trickiest part. At the start of the final charge, the boomers will all aggro toward one of the sea scorpions. I tried to construct a wall of units and buildings for them, but realized that the boomers will start attacking the wall if they can't find a valid pathing towards their target. While it is true that we can bypass this crisis by simply seeking out and destroying all boomers before the final hunt, that takes too much time and I'm lazy, so here we are. I tried many tactics. Kirov bombing, they don't do enough damage. Magnetron lifting, there's too many boomers. My own boomer squad, they're not sturdy enough in a head-on fight. In the end, I succeeded by constructing a bunch of psychic towers to mind control all incoming boomers. This is why I said the conyard we captured earlier will be important. Without this, I would have had to seek out every single boomer one by one, which would have taken a very long time. I managed to mind control 25 boomers while destroying several many more, but the battle is won without a single casualty. Incoming transmission. Comrade General, the purpose of this base is now clear. It is a launch facility. The rocket itself appears to be a space craft. The Premier wishes to know the destination of this space craft. Mission accomplished. Well done, Comrade General. We have analyzed flight plan of this rocket ship. It is programmed to fly to the moon. You have cosmonaut training, yes? By sheer dumb luck, the space shuttle we captured on Totoya Island led to the discovery of the lunar base, which we're here to destroy. Being the only level set on the moon in the entirety of the Command and Conquer series, this mission comes with several unique limitations. While we are given a large amount of cash at the beginning, there is no ore present on the map, limiting our only source of income to two money crates from destroying Yuri's sub-bases. The lack of oxygen also means most Soviet infantry won't be able to operate on the lunar surface. But this also comes with an unusual upside, we're granted the option to recruit cosmonauts, flying infantry capable of firing at both ground and air targets. This unit, combined with the apocalypse tank, will be the main focus of this mission. Aside from his main command center, Yuri has two smaller bases nearby, both of which will produce periodic attack waves that include cosmonauts and gatling tanks. Much like our issue with the siege chopper in the last mission, there isn't an immediate way to heal our cosmonauts, so we must level them up as soon as possible. In small skirmishes, our cosmonauts are unlikely to die with a bit of attention. Use cosmonauts to repel enemy cosmonauts and masterminds, and destroy the gatling tanks with rhino tanks. Yuri will try to flank your defenses with lasher tanks, and will occasionally send floating discs to attack. The first few discs sent by Yuri will beeline toward your power plants ignoring any intercepting forces, but the latter ones will retaliate while en route, so we need to be aware of that. Once we have turtled enough till we can produce apocalypse tanks, we can begin our own assault. The closest base to us is surrounded by several psychic towers with a single gatling turn stationed at the middle. Jump jet infantry have some awkward pathing issues, so we need to tread carefully as we slowly dismantle the outlying towers with cosmonauts. Then, move in with a few epochs to destroy the gatling turret. While it is true that we will be awarded a money crate if we destroy all structures in a subbase, there is no need to hurry. The barrack will actually keep producing cosmonauts one at a time, so we can park a few epochs here for free XP while we go on to siege the other base. The second base is defended by a wall of gatling turrets, with a single psychic tower in the middle, the complete opposite of the previous base, so we attack with the exact opposite strategy as well. The final base fields a mix of defenses. But by this point, we should have a considerable number of elite troops. Use the epochs to eviscerate everything, and let the cosmonauts handle the psychic towers and masterminds. Just make sure nothing gets mind controlled. With that, we finish the mission and conquer the moon. You have only succeeded in delaying the inevitable. I will win. Mission accomplished. Cosmonaut General! 
We have discovered the traitor's location. Yuri commands his forces from his ancestral home in Transylvania. End this, comrade general. Destroy castle and crush him beneath the stones. Comrade general, the entire world watches and waits. You must not fail. Forgive me for speaking frankly, but it might help you to know that upon your return I hope to see you in Moscow. Winter there is cold, yes? But this winter could be different? Hello there! Yuri has one last hideout remaining, his ancestral home back in Transylvania. Giving him no time of respite, we launch a final attack. Our initial position is full of ore, giving us plenty of resources to turtle and tech up. In addition to his own forces, Yuri has mind-controlled allied and Soviet forces at his disposal. On top of sending their own attack waves, they will also utilize IFE combos, the deadliest of which is the terrorist IFE, which will beeline towards your structures and one-shot them. We must guard every angle well, because the IFVs will actively avoid your defenses and seek out points of weakness. We're given the option to construct iron curtains and nuclear silos in this mission, but this is a major trap. Doing so will activate a trigger that allows Yuri to construct his own super weapons, and he can build way more than us. There are two grinders present on the map. Destroying them early on will grant us much needed cash to strengthen our defense. Yuri's mind control tricks seem to have regressed the intelligence of allied spies, as they have elected not to disguise as dogs despite being given the option to do so, letting us instantly recognize them. Once we have built up sufficient defenses, move forward with a few epochs to intercept incoming Kirov airships. Ideally, we would want to free the mind-controlled armies by destroying their respective psychic beacons. But they're hidden behind layers of mind-controlled defenders, and because I want to save as many of them as possible, I don't want to destroy the mind-controlled bases. Therefore, we launch a direct attack on Yuri's hideout, using V3 launchers to demolish Yuri's defenses and send epochs in to clean up the rest. Be careful here, as Yuri will rebuild his defenses, sometimes with unfortunate timings. So we must employ a large number of rocket launchers to keep destroying the defenses. Once the Epochs destroy Yuri's conyard, he won't be able to rebuild anymore. The only things remaining from here are to destroy all of Yuri's direct subordinates, especially all his miners, and finish the mission with a loud bang. New construction options. Our base is under attack. Mission accomplished. The castle has been taken, my general. I knew you would be victorious. Comrade General, we are picking up an energy buildup beneath the castle. The signature wave is consistent with distortion wave of the time machine. I have found your little device in San Francisco. Repairing it was a simple matter. It is too late, comrade. The entire world and all of its history is mine to command and conquer. We still have the time machine's command codes, comrade general. I have overridden the controls and released all of the energy reserves. The machine's energy reserves have been depleted. Yuri cannot use the machine without additional power. He will be trapped in time. <laughs> What is that? Who is there? Welcome to the rice fields, motherfucker! Hello lads, thanks for watching till the end. So ends the saga of Yuri's Revenge. I'm not sure exactly which direction to take this channel in the future yet, but we'll figure something out eventually. If you wish to stay tuned, I would be ecstatic to see you subscribe to this channel. Until next time.